Today's video is going to be more about wool and in particular what textured wools I have in stock right now. These are just going to be the greens. As I go through this next week I will add more colors to it and then you'll have the full inventory. Now just a word of caution. This inventory comes and goes rather quickly. A texture you see today may not be a texture you can find tomorrow. And some of the ones, particularly at the top of the stack, are going to be quite old. So they're older wools that are harder to find. And once they're gone, none of these can be restocked. So let's get started and let me walk you through what I've got and what they're good for. At the top of the list, G20. This is an all-time favorite for me, mainly because of the color. It's a soft yellow green, it has variations when you cut it. You're going to get different tones that you can use in different parts of the leaves. I just love this wool. There is a blue green version of this particular wool. This one happens to be the yellow green. This is an old one, um, a bright blue with a brighter green. I love to use this in leaves. <laughs> this one actually hooks up into what some people call a beige background. Now, I don't see beige when it's hooked. I see all these wonderful colors, but because it's so muted, it does make a really good background. But I also put it in my leaves. You're gonna see a theme here. I put everything in leaves. I love this bright yellow green. Um, it, it is great for a lot of different things. It has a slight heather texture. I can use this in grass, particularly if I mix it with something else, but it's a great one to have on hand. This one is a wool that has three different stripes and I often will use them in evergreens, meaning this will be um, my either light or medium tone, and then I can use this little bit of the black for the dark version. This is one of the true plain green plaids that I found. Um, it's a little too intense for me in landscapes, but I'll use it in... Um, florals, particularly in leaves. I love it there. This one is a um, one that I actually use in the outline border or in the vein of my the big leaves in my room size rug. So it's an integral part of that. I love this dull green color. This is one that a lot of people overlook it looks a lot like gray. It's kind of a gray with a green cast to it. It is one that I often use for grass, um, particularly late season grass, particularly if it's mixed with something else. This one makes for a great primitive green. It is a little bit on the blue green side, definitely muted, and you can use the darker areas for darker parts of the leaves. This is one that a lot of people don't know what to do with, G42. Basically, ignore the turquoise. It's a great green. I use this in floral leaves all the time. Um, the blue only pops up occasionally, and when it does, it's a delightful surprise. This one's a workhorse. The vendor calls this one Kermit. I use this in trees, particularly shrubs. But this one is a staple for me that when it's sold out, it's going to make me very sad. I absolutely love this wool. It has a lot of different uses. This is a nice bright herringbone in green on green. Useful for a lot of things, particularly leaves. Um, I wouldn't use it for grass, it's a little too bright for grass, but I would use it in tree leaves mixed with other, other wools. This is a nice green on green plaid that can be used for ground in landscape, again, leaves, anything you want to make green, this is a great green. 
This one works really well with that other one. I don't remember what the number was offhand, but the other one that is a green like this, I put the two together and use them often in landscapes. There's a green on green, sort of a Kelly green plaid, um, a brighter, a brighter green plaid. Again, I would use this all day in leaves and um, uh, trees, that type of thing. G51, one of my favorite ones to use when I'm hooking Queen Anne's lace in a light background. Okay, so you can't put little white dots in a light background because they don't show up, right? But this seems to have a nice little look to it, and it is my go-to for hooking what need to be light flowers in a dark or in a light background. My all-time absolute favorite green. I use this green for everything. You can use this green for a background. I use recommend this green in all primitive grasses. It works great. It's got enough dull lines in it to tone it down, but it's got the heathery look in the straightaways. This is a good all around plaid. This one is a great dark texture, particularly in a primitive rug. Um, you could use this as a background, any place you want a darker sort of a blue green. Once it's all hooked, it just gives sort of an overall dark, wonderful, yummy appearance. Here's a um, herringbone, um, sort of a green on green, but it's got dots of other colors, but don't rely on those other colors because once it's hooked, none of it's gonna show up. You're basically gonna get this tone of green, and I love that tone of green. Here's a brighter version with little flecks of colors throughout it, a little slightly more loosely woven than some of the other ones, but yet very, um, very beautiful, hooked in and mixed with all those other colors. This one is a nice plaid. You can use this for a lot of things. I would use this in trees, um, any place that you want a nice green. It's a very comfortable green to live with. This one, G58, I believe this one, yeah, this one is double-sided. It's this color on the inside, and then it's this darker version on the outside. Just a slight difference, not much, and unless you hook it in mass, you're not really gonna notice the difference. Um, again, it would make a nice background also. This one with the lovely diamonds, G059, just a nice, soft, dull, minty um, green. I just love this look. Of course, by the time you cut it up, you're not gonna know that it started out with diamonds, but it sure is fun to look at before you cut it up, right? These ombres are so handy, and they're pretty much one of a kind. Not all green ombres are exactly the same. They have to be woven at the same time. These are a bit older, so they might not, they're not gonna match what you can buy um, now currently. But look at all these various colors that you have in there. You can always cut it across the stripe. I don't recommend it. I like it cut with the stripe. That way I can pick and choose where each of the colors are going to go. This one, you know, if this one is more of a green green, this one is more of a darker, duller green. But again, you can use it in exactly the same way as the other ombre. Here's one in a lime green or a yellow green, a nice bright color. Think of this as like centers of flowers. Oh, how pretty, wouldn't that be gorgeous? This one, G063, is a good candidate for overdying. It's got all this difference in value. It's got a good color under uh, way and lights and darks, 
but if you just want to wash this and hook it up just the way it is it will work this is a soft herringbone in a dull gray green this is one I would use all day long for a lot of different things including ground and lawns and um, things along that line depending on how dark you want it to go this one here is a little bit lighter might make a better lawn depending on the colorway of the rest of your things um, but this one hooks up wonderfully also this one Here we go. G068 is a double sided wool. It's a softer, almost not really fuzzy, um, but a softer side and then this side. Um, you could use both in the rug and interchange them just randomly or use them to your best advantage. This one does not have an inventory number it's literally the only piece I have left in the studio um, a little bit on the blue side particularly if you're hooking in these areas but look how yummy some of that is um, this would be delightful in any primitive rug and last but not least and again without a number I have this one I call this one tablecloth <laughs> only because for years I had I think it was six yards of this set aside that I used to cover the family table at Thanksgiving. Of course, it's not this wool. You know, that wool is still in the tablecloth cupboard. Um, and for that reason, I wasn't selling this wool actively because I wanted to reserve a couple more yards just in case I needed a little bit more of it. This hooks up wonderfully because you get these little different textures going on depending on where you are in the plaid so that's the greens that i have the next video i will do another color and i'll continue with this process until i show you everything that i currently have on hand now how would you order this wool it's easy go to cindygayrugcooking.com and I'll put the link in the show notes so you can find it there just down below and click on that. Now, it's going to be a generic sort of a place where you can order. And what you do is you check the Google spreadsheet that's there, which is the inventory that I use every day to know what I have on hand. See if I've got it in stock. And then if I do, go ahead and order it. And then... Um, when you're checking out, you're going to want to put your wool that you want to buy into the notes section so that I know what you're buying. So you could order six yards and then go to the notes section and say, I want two yards of G52, one of Y002, one of B31, that's what, four yards, and say two of N42, some of my favorites. That way, I'll know what to include in your order. That's it for now. Stay tuned for more of these videos as I show you the rest of my inventory over the next few weeks. And if you want to watch more videos, check these out.